So I'm excited today. I've got a, I've got a lot to share and a lot to talk about, which is exciting. And the, the big thing that, I, that is really true to me is, is just how true what it is we do. What we're doing here in the magnetic mind process is just so true. And it's very rare in life you get to experience something that's just true and pure. And, and here's what's true, that you can never create something by trying to solve a problem. And that's the first truth that is very important to understand about this process is you can't ever create something new by trying to solve a problem. And, and here's why. Let's say you're trying to solve the problem of poverty that you don't feel like you have enough money or you feel like you have lack. If you build an identity of needing to solve that problem, and that's what fuels your motivation. You're only going to get as far away from that problem as that problem has energy over you. Because if your identity is built on getting away from that, what happens when you get a little, you know, quite away from it? What happens? Well, you have to go back to it to get your energy, to get your lifeblood. Let that sink in for a second. You actually have to go back to it to get the energy. Because that's what created your motivation. It's what created who you are. And you become someone that's built on an identity based on something that you are trying to get away from or a way you feel incomplete or a way you're trying to avoid it. And that's a big truth, isn't it? That's a big truth to, to wrap your head around is that by the nature of getting away from or not accepting it, you are reinforcing that you have, you have an identity of needing to get away from it. And, and we see this everywhere. And it's, it, you know, I, I went through a lot of personal development work until I really saw it and understood it and really realized that, that you can't see yourself as broken or needing fixing. Because by doing that, you're reinforcing the fact that you are somebody that's needing fixing. And so it's very hard just to let go. Yet that's what's needed. It's just let go. Be okay with anything happening. And it's very, very, very exciting to me just to let you know that that's a truth. That that's a complete truth. Is that if you have an identity of not allowing something for it not to be there, if that is your identity built off avoiding something happening then today's session is going to be very, very important to you because here's my question is what are you not willing to allow happen? What are you not willing to allow to happen? That's a big question, right? What are you not willing to allow to happen? When I, when I examined this, I thought to myself, here's what can't happen. I can't in my life, I can't not be a success. I have to be a success. I couldn't just let myself not become a success. And my coach said to me, well, Chris, when are you going to let that go? I said, well, why would I want to let that go? It's, you know, it's who I am. Well, what would happen if you let it go? And I said, well, that's interesting. If I let go of the need to be successful, well, who would I be? I said, that's how I've shaped my identity. They said, exactly. Your identity is about someone who's been trying to get to become successful. And it was just like this moment that I went, wow, I get it. The identity had been someone that had been needing to become successful, not just a successful person. The person who's already successful is they've let it go. They let it go. And then the other thing I said, well, another thing that I'm never willing to allow happen is I could never, I could never just, I could never just go broke and completely screw up and do bad things to people. I could never be, you know, the source of someone else's misery. I could never, ever, ever be that. I could never be the source of someone else's misery, do something wrong. I could never do that. I could never fail coach said, well, how can you control that? 
can you see Chris how you might not be able not play full out because you're worried your actions might turn out to to not work and cause someone else pain can you see how that's limiting you if you and I said well no 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 I, would, I wouldn't ever want that I would never want that to happen and and my question well can you see how if you have to be you know maybe you have to be the prime minister of a country or maybe Chris you have to lead a, an army to battle. Can you see how even, Chris, can you see how much you're going to struggle firing people and letting people go if you can never, ever fail and be the source of someone's misery? You know, can you see how many things are going to be very difficult to you? And I went, yeah, he said, see, sometimes, Chris, maybe someone has to, you know, have some pain for the, 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 for the greatest good of all. Maybe that's the greatest, op best option available. I went, oh, that's interesting. He says, what if you let it go? And I said, well, what if then might, it might happen? And, and they, he said this, this really interesting thing to me. He said, well, Chris, you don't have to worry about it not happening. You don't have to be against it for it to not happen. And the example we used was, right now, you're probably not worried about a, a, burg a burglar coming in and stealing your stuff. Now, you, you wouldn't wish it to happen. But it doesn't happen. But it doesn't not happen because you're sitting there worried about it. You're not taking actions to avoid it. It's just not something you think about. Imagine if you had to think about all the things you didn't want to happen. And I went, wow, that would take up a lot of energy. And he said, exactly. This is taking up energy. You've got energy on trying to be a success. You've got energy and not failing. You've got energy and not being the source of other people's pain. You've got this energy there. He said, instead of Chris, of bringing the energy back and just focusing on what you're creating. I went, hmm. And I was sitting there and I was talking to three mentors. One is a, an amazing psychologist, amazing healer. Uh, awesome. One is a multiple New York Times bestselling author, and then the other one is just a multi billionaire, just one of the, the richest person that I've ever met. And they all shared these stories about they had to get to this place of just letting go and just being in the now. And there, there were some statements and some things that I've, I've helped that have helped me to really get to this. But uh, I thought it would be a really good session for us today. Who thinks so? <laughs> well, good, because that's what we're doing. And so it's all about understanding the present state, the wizard's gate, getting right into this place where we're not trying to get away from anything and we're not trying to get into anything. So I'd like you to rate out of 10. The wizard's gate, Deborah, the wizard's gate, right in that moment where you access everything because you don't need anything. Where you're not trying to get away from something or towards something because there's nothing better than the now. And that's the first one that I want you to, to focus in on. The first statement that I want you to rate out of one to 10 is this. Right now is better than what I desire. Mm. How much can you accept that? That right now is better than what you desire. Give it a rating, one to 10. It's such a, an interesting thing. But Chris, how could right now be better than what I desire? If you give it a zero or a two or a one, there's some work to do. Because if right now is not as good as what you desire, you're out of alignment. So is right now better than what you desire? 10 out of 10 agree with that. Zero out of 10, completely disagree. That's the first one. Second question is, there is nothing that I can do, nothing I could do to be more or less loved. There's nothing I could do. I could 
you know, be, be the worst serial killer in the world, or I could build the best charity and save the planet. And neither of them would cause me to be more or less loved. Must you agree with that out of 10? There is nothing I can do to be more or less loved. Do you feel like there's things you could do to get more love? Do you feel like there's things you could do and lose love? If so, give it the, the correct answer. See, finding this place where you just go, whatever I do, I've already got it. I'm not going to get more love than I give myself right now. I'm not going to get less love than I give myself right now than I get from others and I get from the world. It's not going to happen. The next one, there is nothing I can do to belong more or less. There's nothing I can do to fit in more or less. Like if I did something bad, everyone sort of said, you're a bad person and kicked you out of the family, out of the tribe. Or, hey, if I do this, then people will, I'll, I'll fit in better. Zero to 10, just think about that. See, the present state, the wizard's gate, is just so important to understand that it's the key to accessing all magic, all creation, everything, is to get into this place where you're truly satisfied with everything you have right now and you just desire more of it. So you've got to plant the seed. You must plant the seed of what it is that you want to grow. If you're not planting the seed of what you want to grow, you're planting seeds of doubt, trying to grow a tree of fulfillment. You're planting seeds of lack, trying to grow a tree of abundance. And that's just never going to work. That's just never, ever, ever going to work. You see, there's, there's so much here now and in the magnetic mind process, this is the most important thing to understand is that anytime we're doing anything, we're reinforcing something. So whatever we're doing, it's a reinforcing, it's a self-fulfilling mechanism. So if we're in the place of gratitude now, well, guess what's going to grow? Gratitude. If we're in a place of abundance now, well, guess what's going to grow? Abundance. If we're in the feeling of whatever, that's what's going to grow. So here's my question to you. What are you not willing? What are you not willing to ever let happen? What are you not willing to let go of? I'm not willing to let go of my need for success, or I'm not willing to let go of my fear of failure. I'm not willing to ever, ever completely go broke. And, and whatever it is you ask yourself, what am I not willing? What am I not willing to ever let happen? Just take a moment and ask yourself, well, why? Not willing, yeah, it's, I'm not willing to ever have a divorce. You've got to ask yourself, well, why? Because your unwillingness to ever, uh, to ever even accept that or to be against it is taking up space. Now, am I saying that you want any of that? No. We're going to choose other things. But the unwillingness, the complete fear and resistance of things will limit the amount of action, the amount of uh, success, just the amount of just get up and go that you'll be able to have. Let me just check Facebook. No, there's some people there watching. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Very, very true. And so this is what I find really interesting about this is we've got to choose what we're going to create instead of choosing what we're going to avoid. Most of us are doing things based on trying to get away or to create different feelings. Whether we like to admit it or not, when we go down to the truth, the reason why we're doing certain things isn't a true choice. 
See, the true magic of the end result, it's just a choice. You just decide it. You just want it. It's not going to make you better. It's not going to make you worse if it fails. So you're not going to get more love. It's just what you choose because you already have it all now. Does that make sense? If you already had it all now, and there was no way that anyone could take all of it away from you because you're creating the all from inside of you, how could anything that you choose be anything but a choice? Just a decision. See, the problem that we have here is that we've set ourselves up that an external device, an external success, an external failure, an external relationship, an external something is going to cause or create our internal. And that is the number one mistake, isn't it? Type in a yes if you agree. It's the number one mistake. And because of it, it causes just so much pain. So much pain. But Chris, won't I just be unmotivated? See, we, we can't even understand how we could be motivated if we didn't have pain. If I had nothing that I needed to solve, what would I do? Well, that's what the artist does. That's what the painter does. It's when, it's when we're in pure creation is when you're finally just 100% happy. And that's why I call it the wizard's gate because it's when you can truly just create just for creation's sake. Hey, I want to build a massive business. Why? Well, because I chose it. Awesome. Why? I just wanted to. Why do you want to? No reason. I feel fantastic. I feel great. I love my life. Well, why are you doing that? Because that's what I choose to do. That's what I think is fun. That's what's exciting. That's what I'm just choosing. Oh, your business blew up. Oh, did it? Still feel the same. And that's the key. And it's, it's hard for us to get to that place. And that's what we're looking for. That's the magnetic moment. That's that precise time when we're finally there and we can just create. But getting there, that's why we're here, isn't it? That's why we have the meditations daily. That's why we have the lenses. That's why we have it all, because getting there is the key. And so the question I have is, what are you not willing to let go of what do you what what are your limits where where are there places where you're still saying if that happens i'd feel bad or if this happened i'd feel great because that's where you're going to find the letting go the letting go of that the letting go of that will be the unraveling of this whole structure back into the now. And I promise you, you're actually not motivated because you have that problem. You're not. See, a lot of us think that because we don't have the money, that's what got us motivated about money. It's not. It's just not. It's just what we've used. We've never used anything else. People say to me, but Chris, if I didn't have the pain of failure, how would I achieve go for success? course you would why wouldn't you why wouldn't you just go for something why wouldn't you just be a, like a child at play just enjoying it just going for it who would need uh, something to get away from and it's such a revelation people go but chris i can't understand it i can't imagine how that would be well here's what it's like it's just fun and exciting to create it and so you're in this place so you decide it you do it you move towards it you 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 just expand you explore you go for it but no one's going to go hey you know what i feel so great that i'm just going to sit in bed all day that's not it you're not in it if you're that you see you get to a place where oh, i'm so centered i'm great this feels awesome and now i want to expand this i want to take this everywhere i want to have more fun with this i want to grow this i want to make it bigger how do i make this bigger i'm so satisfied with it now how do i make this bigger oh i know what would make this bigger more friends more fun more relationships a bigger business helping more people that would be fun and if it doesn't happen i'm still having fun because i started already whole See, a lot of us, we've got a, a, an unfilled glass and we're trying to fill it up with the external and hope, hopefully that that works for us. Who's with me with this, by the way? Let me know if you're, if you're with me and you're getting this because to me, this is the secret secret, the magnetic process is to get in it now 
and then just be in it and know that you have it. This is what Viktor Frankl wrote in Man's Search for Meaning. That this is this is what Nelson Mandela found when when you know he was locked up and didn't have all the external. They found that Stephen Hawking, who passed away I think a couple of years ago now, didn't even didn't even have movement of any part of his body. I think he could just move his eye. And he said he finally realized that he's not a body. He finally realized that he's a spiritual being. He finally got it. And what a gift it was to not be able to move his body because he was then able to realize that he was a spiritual being. And so here's my question to you. When are you going to choose to accept this as a reality and accept and choose that it's all about the feeling now and to, to just choose that? Just choose it. Who's with me? Let me just check Facebook here. Who's really ready to just choose it? Hmm. Good. Good. I'm glad you are. Really choose it. Because when you choose it, it gets to choose you back. That's key. That's key. So let's choose it. What I do now on a daily basis is, is I make choices. I feel into those choices and I decide now that it's done. And I do it with my feeling, okay? And we do it by making a choice. And the choice is made very simply by choosing the end feeling. I want you to understand this. You can make a choice in life by choosing the end feeling. Okay. When you choose the end feeling, when you choose the end feeling, you're in it now. And by choosing the end feeling, you're there and not choosing anything else, just choosing where you want to go and how it's going to feel without trying to run away from things or get things or think that anything's going to be better or worse if an outcome happens or doesn't happen. The process of letting go is huge. So here's my question. What would you like to choose? I'll, I'll share out one of my choices. One of my choices is I choose the end result of living in total financial, physical, and spiritual abundance. It's a choice that I make. Can you see it? I choose the end result, and I've got it written up on my wall, in total financial, physical, and spiritual abundance. By making that choice, what I'm doing is I'm choosing it. Now, I'm not choosing that in a way that because then I'll feel better about my life. No, I'm just choosing that feeling now I'm feeling it. I'm planting that seed now. Okay. And here's how I make the choice. I choose it. When I read it, I say, I choose the end result of living in, in total financial, physical, and spiritual abundance. And I close my eyes. And I experience what it's like to have made that choice now. Right now. Breathe into it. And that's it. See, when you understand the process here, because this is, this is the 13th call. This is the final one before we start again. By going through all the processes over the last three months, getting to this, this is when you get it. It's all about choosing and deciding who you're going to be and stepping into it. Like every single one of the meditations, Michelle, like all of them. And you just choose it. It does feel great because you have to realize that if you're trying to plant the seed of 
trying to grow a tree of confidence by planting seeds of doubt, you're going to have a really tough time. Ridiculous trying to grow a tree of abundance by planting seeds of scarcity. So let's try another one of mine. Another one of mine. Okay. Another one that you guys will probably have. Okay, so here's another one that I have. I choose the end result of empowering millions to live their full potential through live events and programs. So I choose the end result of empowering millions to live their full potential through live events and programs. Okay, so I read it out and we're going to write yours in a second. So I choose the end result of empowering millions to live their full potential through live events and programs. Then I close my eyes. So close your eyes with me. And just make that choice. I choose the end result of empowering millions to live their full potential through live events and programs. Just feel it, can you? And I could just sit there and I do each day. I'll, I'll make my choices. Did it feel great? Yeah, of course it feels great. And I'll make those choices and I'll just feel into it now. So you've learned all these processes and they're all there for you to let go of the past, to step into the feeling of what it is that you are now, to stop trying this and just know that I'll have it now. Whatever you're planning will grow. And that's the key. Whatever you're planting seeds into the most fertile place, which is, you know, in your brain <laughs> and out there to the universe, that is just the most important place for you to be planting the seed. So I want you to do it. So start a sentence. I choose the end result of, and then I want you to finish it. Okay. I choose the end result of, and then I want you to finish it. Okay. Yeah, you should be doing the, you should be meditating every day. I do 45 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes every night because I know that as I'm growing a $10 million company right now, I need to be in that end result of the leader of a $10 million company. Old Chris can't do it. Nice. I choose the end result of amazing business. Great. Great. I would, I would make that a bit more specific. Yeah. I choose the end result of a loving relationship with my husband. Nice. You guys are getting it. And so we can all make that choice. The, let's all choose the end result of a loving relationship with a loving partner. That seems like a good choice. And let's do it as a group example, because I, I, uh, I think it's something that every single one of us would, would choose. Choose to have a loving relationship with a loving partner. Let's just say it. So I choose to have a loving relationship with a loving partner. And just close your eyes and just say it in your head, that's what you choose. And choose it. Make a decision. Choose the end result of a loving relationship with a loving partner and just choose it. Just feel into it. You'll feel the energy around you if you really just choose it. It's so good, but it's enough. 
studies show that the field around a human body starts changing and shifting in line with their emotions after 17 seconds. So it's enough, guys. You don't have to be in it for that long. It's massive. And so, so I really wanted to today just let you know that the magnetic mind process is the fastest way to success. I think it was Buddha or Gandhi or someone said, if you're too busy to meditate for an hour a day, you need to meditate for two hours. Because, and I don't mean any disrespect by not knowing who said it, I just don't remember. And so here's the interesting thing, guys, is that we all think that all these other things are so important to do, but the magnetic mind process is the most important. You should be doing it daily at morning and evening, but we think everything else is important. We're so busy racing off there to do things, trying to create things. And it's ridiculously stupid. We're trying to create new things, but we're planting the seed of scarcity, planting the seed of hard work, right? Reinforcing hard work so that it keeps on being hard work, reinforcing seeds of doubt. I hear people go to me, oh, you know, um, I need to take time off and go away to Bali to rejuvenate. No, you don't. No, you don't. You need to make a choice right now that you're going to create a business and a life here now that is fulfilling and enlightening and rejuvenating in itself. You need to choose it now. The only reason that someone needs to escape to rejuvenate is they haven't chosen something in the way that's actually going to keep their energy going. Who's with me on that? It doesn't make sense. I've got this from one of my clients. Oh, I've got to go away and fly away and be over here and do these things. And I said, yeah, no, you don't. You don't. That's not going to change the here. You know, maybe you still go away on the holiday. That's great. But it's not it's going to solve the problem. The problem is the structure and the choices that are made to just choose to have it all now. And that's the most important thing. Guys, I, I am, you know, I'm just absolutely uh, beyond thrilled to have taken uh, a group of you through the 13 weeks. We're going to be starting the next 13 weeks uh, in, a, in a few weeks' time and to keep on going. And it's a, it's a great process. Right from the beginning, learning lenses, going through every single process, learning anchoring, identities, parts, everything like that to remove and let go of who you've been. But the key is what I'm talking about tonight. The key is the daily habit of choosing what it is that you're going to plant into the ether or into your unconscious. By choosing it consciously, daily, it's the only way to create it. It's the only way. And when I've sat and talked with billionaires, that's what they say they do. They don't say that they go out there and you guys can go have a listen to some Kevin Trudeau stuff if you want. He's not my billionaire mentor and I won't ever tell you who is because he asked me not to, but, but he's another billionaire who actually puts his stuff out there and talks about it and says, you know, you know, we, whenever we're going to do make a big decision, we first will get together, close our eyes and, and make sure that we get the end feeling. And this is just what most of us have never been told. We all think it's something else, but it's just not. It's just not. The end feeling is it all. It's, it's everything. So I, I didn't want to go through too much today because uh, my main intention is to leave you all with a skill, to leave you all and say, you have the answer. And we have an amazing process over 24 meditations that are great. Well, they're better than great. When I listen to my own meditations, I just go, man, I wish these were around. You've got them. You plug them in. You go for it. You can use others. The key is to step into who you're being every single day. And that's just, oh. you only really believe me after you do it. <laughs> and that's the thing. You won't be able to truly believe it until you do it, play full out and go for it. And then it shows up. And so here's my intention. My intention is to recommit you. Recommit you to say, you know what? Or maybe I, I came in with a lot of energy, but did I do my meditations every day? Been in this program a few months. Did I do them every day? And, and for, for a lot of you, it's no. But it's not like, oh, I'm bad. It's, oh, well, let it go. Let's do it. You know, and then maybe this week you'll, 
you'll get once a day. Maybe it's what you get twice a day, but then keep going. And here's what I know. You, you step into your end result feeling once a day, just doing that, stepping into it, sitting in it, doing one of the meditations, loving it, just like the quantum jumping or the feeling of the end result or the wisdom meditation. You just do those in the morning. Everything will shift so, 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 so fast. And uh, I'm more certain in this about than anything.